Hey, it's Rachel from All About Planners. So it's no secret that I love planning anything and everything, especially travel planning. So um, I've tried various different ways of trip planning over the years. Uh, the first time I went overseas, I did not take a laptop. I didn't have my business then, so I didn't need it. So I created a printable planner and then I took that with me. Worked great. But now that I travel with laptop, I decided to go digital. So there's obviously lots of apps and tools and stuff that you can use, but I decided, no, I wanted something that's offline something that is already installed on my computer and then I can just access it whenever I don't need internet connection. So I went with Excel, which obviously I already had. So I created various tabs. I was really only gonna do a couple like for the itinerary, but then I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna organize the entire trip. So I ended up doing a whole bunch of tabs, which I'll go through in a sec, um, to organize everything from start to finish. So first tab I have handy info. Now I tend to do um, big overseas trips, like minimum one month. I live in Australia, it takes so long and costs so much to get anywhere. I like to make it worthwhile, so minimum one month. Hence the need for a spreadsheet. That is a lot of stuff happening in a month, lots of things to organize. Um, so that's why I went and created like a whole system. So obviously there's other people that I'm traveling with, but for the purpose of not plastering that information off the internet, I just filled out my own. So I did like a snapshot info, obviously I'll fill out the rest of this stuff. Um, the trip planning is in progress, keep in mind this is not finished, I haven't gone on the trip yet, I'm like halfway through planning it. So then I have like the currencies needed, just other handy info. Um, if I was going somewhere that needed a visa, so I was going to go to Russia, um, obviously I need a visa for that, but now that I'm not, so I don't, but anyway, this section is there, obviously I need a visa, if you go to the US you get the idea. Then I have a to-do list, which I have not filled out yet because I'm still in the like preliminary planning stages, but once I work out, for example, exactly what tools I want to book, then I'll list them down here. Um, you know, I need to go and buy like a new winter jacket, I'll list that. You can put anything and everything in there here. Um, the other thing that I really like about Excel and one of the reasons that I wanted to use it is that you can filter things, you can filter them by color, um, by like coded text, etc. I'll show you what I mean in um, one of the ones that I've filled out already. And then because I'm traveling with other people, sometimes, um, you know, one person will do it and then, you know, the whole group doesn't have to, that person will do it for everyone. So that's why I've got the person responsible, obviously a due date, because if I don't have that, it's not really going to get done. I don't want everything to be left to the last minute. And then I have a little done column where I can just put, I tend to just put a Y when it's done. Um, you could also just delete it off your list altogether um, if you wanted to. Next, we have the budget. So I've got all my budget categories in here. Um, yes, I know this is pricey. This is a six and a half week trip going from Australia to Europe. I'm not doing any organized tours. I'm doing it all myself. So hence um, why it's a little pricey. I'd rather spend more and get exactly what I want. So I've got all my categories listed out here. This is a fully um, customizable spreadsheet. So you can type over it. If you don't like that text, you can put whatever you want. You can add your own. You just literally click and type it straight in there. And I do have formulas set up so that it will auto sum it, which is great. And then it will link to the top up here. So there's no manually um, typing, like, uh, sorry, manually um, using a calculator. You just type it in once and then it will auto calculate it for you. And I can see that obviously I haven't booked any, everything yet. Um, like I still need to do most of, um, like obviously the food, some pre-trip stuff. So yeah, at the moment it's showing that it's under budget, but in reality, it'll probably come out pretty much on par with my budget. Anywho, so that is the budget section. Next, I have the attractions list. Uh, like I said earlier, work in progress. So I don't really have many things on here yet. This is pretty much the thing that I do last when I've nailed down exactly what I want. I've done the itinerary in detail with um, schedule. So yeah, work in progress, um, but just some notes, I guess, give you guys some ideas. So like I want to do a canal cruise in Amsterdam. That's how much it costs in Euro. And then once I've got all of my things over here, then I'll convert them all to AUD. Um, and then obviously it will give me the total of how much that I need and then I know okay what am I pre-booking so for example I want to pre-book the Anne Frank Museum because that's probably going to sell out um, but then the other stuff that I'm just going to buy when I get there like the canal cruise then I know how much money I need to take with me either in cash or on a travel card and then I also like to color code like I uh, mentioned earlier so going to the Netherlands I put everything for that in blue going to Prague, I put that in like orange, different color, you get the idea. So I've got destination over here, but I've also got the filters set up. So you can just tick whichever one you want and it will filter everything else out. The other option that you can do, so then it all comes back, you don't lose it. That's another great thing that I love about Excel. You can just highlight it to see what you need, not the whole thing. Um, the other thing that you can do if you're visual like me is just filter by color. And I find that's quite handy as well. So. Um, next, I do the itinerary by month. So this is basically where I start my trip planning. I work out where I want to go and when. 
So again, I continue the colors throughout. So remember Prague was orange, so it's orange on here. It's orange the whole way through on all of the tabs. I just like to color code, it makes it a lot easier. So um, I've got my weeks laid out like this. I prefer a Monday start, you can always change it to Sunday if you wanted to, and of where I'm going. So when I'm departing, when I'm coming back, I don't go into too much detail on this monthly itinerary, um, simply because I have other uh, more detail so I've got itinerary by week and then I also have like the flight list and then I also use the online tool visit a city and then there is an app and you can download your trip plan that you've done online and then you can look at that offline as well so I use sort of this one to start with of where I want to go and then if it is a kind of short domestic trip or I'm going somewhere where that tool doesn't cover it so it only covers cities keep that in mind um, then I'll use this one here but I'll get to that in a sec so I've got it color coded and then I don't go into too much detail. I'll just be like, okay, I want to do a day tour. I'm going to do stuff around Amsterdam. I don't need to list out all the stuff like, you know, 10 a.m. Anne Frank Museum. I've got that in Visitor City, which is like a whole schedule thing. I'll include a link um, to that tutorial that I did on how I use that tool. Um, but yeah, so Amsterdam, that means we're not leaving Amsterdam. We're staying in there. We've got a day trip. Okay, we're flying that day. So I put in the flight time and I know, okay, I've got a half day. And then, for example, um, this one here, I know that, okay, I've got the whole day in Ljubljana and then, you know, the flight's not until the evening. But you can work out if you've got a half day here and there, that kind of thing. Um, transport times, like how long it's going to take if you're getting the train. Now, the reason that some of these are in bold is because that is like a definite. So most of this at this point is definite, like I've booked my flights, but I'm still working out exactly what I'm doing each day and the schedule. But for things like day tours, they tend to only be on specific days. And these are the only days that work for me. So like I can't move that around. Otherwise I can just copy, right click copy and then right click um, paste. And then you can shuffle things around a lot as well. Um, if you wanted to go copy, let's say I wanted to rearrange the days and then you can just move it around like that and then you are done um, but obviously I need to move that back so that's how I use my monthly overview I like just having it weekly just a quick um, snapshot and I can see how many days I'm spending in a country or in each place I don't when I go to Europe tend to want to do more than three or four days I find it can get a little boring it's okay like for Munich um, because there's lots of day trips but otherwise you don't really need too much time usually well I find I don't I travel at quite a um, like pack it in really like to like 8 a.m. till 8 p.m. like minimum every day okay so itinerary by week now because I've got the visitor city tool um, that I'm using and because that has all of the cities that I'm going to then I don't really need this one I started using it and I was like well I'm kind of just doubling up at the moment however I have used this system before when I did um, domestic Aussie trips so when you don't really need that tool for that and you're planning it yourself then that's when I use this spreadsheet which I've got laid out by a.m. lunch p.m. dinner and then nighttime and then you can enter in your dates in here but I also have it set up up the top here for um, so it's really optional set up here for formula so I've just typed in the date once and then I've got a formula where it will automatically update all of the dates on the rest of this um, spreadsheet the other thing to note, I've got this going up to week four, but as you saw here, I'm going for longer than that. So you can always add in extra um, sections if you want to, just literally copy and paste. So left click and drag, right click copy, right click in in insert copied cells. And then that one still has the formula carrying over. So yeah, you can just add another week that day and obviously this would become week five dates. So that's that one. Um, the other great thing about Excel that I really like is it will, expand the boxes to suit how much text you need. So um, when I was using the, I made editable, an editable printable um, with PDF and that was uh, worked pretty good except when I had a lot of stuff happening at one time and then the font would get really small to fit the box because they were all pre-sized where I see how this box is bigger and I don't have as much happening in the PM so the box is smaller. So with Excel, if you double left click and then press Alt Enter, you can type whatever text you like. And then if you double left click, it will expand the box out to automatically fit whatever size you have um, written. So that's another reason why I really like Excel. This has been working really great. I've been using this spreadsheet for like two months now, planning this trip um, from the very beginning. It has been working fantastic. So flight comparison. This all looks really neat now, but to be honest, it was pretty much a mess before because I was complaining, uh, comparing a bunch of different flight routes. I've booked all of the flights now. 
Um, so that's why it's nice and neat. I deleted out all the ones that were irrelevant that I'm not booking anymore, but I did have a full comparison happening. Um, hence why I've got like from to, and then you know you can filter by whatever city. So I was gonna, okay, do I go via um, Copenhagen? Should I go another route um, via Hong Kong instead of Singapore, etc. So anyway, that's what those are. And then you can also compare the airline as well and all the different flight times and costs. Like if you do a red eye flight, it's tend to be cheaper. Um, anyway, so that's what that was for. Um, that one's just a stopover, so hence why I've got a little Y in there. I've got all the flight times. Those are the local time, obviously. And then obviously the dates, the cost, and then the baggage included. Um, to just note that because when I didn't have that column in there, when the travel agent quoted me some flights, I was like, hang on, does this include baggage or not? So it just kind of like, you know, reconfirm, get that. Make sure it's included in your um, quote. Okay, so then we have the accommodation comparison. So this one's probably the most um, intense spreadsheet. I do a lot of research when it comes to accommodation. Like I will not just stay at any old place. There is a very extensive vetting process before I will stay at a hotel. Why? Because whenever I do that, it works out great. There's pretty much never been an issue with any hotel that I have stayed at because I do so much research before I go. So again, same thing with um, filtering uh, with different colors and the place. And then I have obviously the name, the address, check-in date, and check-out date. This is very handy when you are trying to remember what all the dates are. You've just got one nice reference section to look at. Okay, these are the dates I plug in, and then you're good to go. Um, again, check-in, check-out time. I really only include that because sometimes I'll need the luggage storage. So I land in Copenhagen at like 6 a.m. Check-in is not until 2.30, so I need to have luggage storage to drop it at the hotel because I'm not just gonna like sit around doing nothing and waste half a day. So yeah, it's got luggage storage. And then if we keep going across, um, oh yeah, here. I've got, does it have luggage storage? Yes, most hotels do these days, but I just like to double check, just for peace of mind. I don't want any sort of drama when I get there. Um, and then I've also got the number of nights as well. So the reason I put that in there is so I can work out the cost per night. I try not to exceed $100 per person per night, but Copenhagen, oh my god, it is expensive. Um, so yeah, really blowing the budget on that one. Okay, and then we go to the TripAdvisor rating. So I love TripAdvisor, you've probably heard of it before. Really, really honest reviews, which I love. So people will really um, bag it out if it was shit, and they'll also say, obviously, good stuff if it was good. I try not to stay anywhere that is less than three and a half um, stars. Um, again, why, another reason why I do all this research and why I book it sooner is so you have your pick of the bunch. So I tend to do hotel research about eight or nine months before I go. Same with booking flights. I do. I pretty much start planning a trip like a year before. Anyway, so this one, while it's three and a half stars, it's an Ibis styles. I've stayed at plenty of those before, so I'm like, okay, it's pretty much standard wherever you go, so that one is okay. Otherwise, I pretty much go with a four or more. And then I also do my own rating so I compare what's available, what are my expectations, like I need free Wi-Fi, that's a must have. So anyway, then I give it my own rating. Um, then I have where I'm going to and from, so if I'm arriving by train or um, you know, if I need to take a taxi, all that kind of stuff. So I just put that in there because obviously I don't want to be paying a ton of money for a hotel that's out in the middle of nowhere and yeah, I just like to be near public transport, especially if I'm doing day trips and taking the train and going ourselves. So I don't like to be any more than 10 minutes away from um, a train station, preferably a main one as well. Pros, obviously free Wi-Fi as you are seeing is um, pretty much a necessity for me. And then I have some cons. I always check where it's near because that can be okay a problem. And then just some notes column for you to add yourself. I do have a couple of blank ones because um, the people that I'm traveling with, my family, they've gone and booked those. So I'm just waiting on them to send me the details and then I will add them in my spreadsheet. So yeah, it looks nice and color coded, love it. And then car rental. I'm not renting a car. I do not want to drive in Europe. I think that would just end really bad. Um, so yeah, no car rental. However, I did do um, a car rental when I went to New Zealand and that's when I used this spreadsheet. Pretty standard stuff. Um, just like to especially note the insurance and the excess type of car, like how many suitcases can it take, some cost obviously, and then notes. Um, transfer comparison. So this is pretty much how you're getting from A to B basically anywhere. So if you're doing a day trip, you can put that in here. If you need transport from the airport to your hotel, if you are going via train 
somewhere so I'm going from Amsterdam to Belgium by a train as um, yes so sorry to Brussels so I've got that in here as well and then I can check up the um, prices and I've got all the other stuff over here which is pretty much similar to the accommodation one I always check it on TripAdvisor so if you're using like a, um, a shuttle bus company or something to and from the airport you can go check their reviews if they're reliable and obviously pre-booking as well and then if it is required then I go okay I need to book it and then I tend to use B like the bold thing as my code that I have gone and booked it but again I'll probably just add it to the to-do list over here as well once I've sorted um, myself out so tour comparisons another pretty color-coded spreadsheet I like to put in the URL link of the tour and then I can just click it and it'll go straight to it um, I basically go to via tour and that's really handy for what um, tours are available and it also gives me an, an idea on what things are like the logistics what is I guess a feasible option to get there so Munich for example there's lots of stuff around Munich but some stuff's just like a little bit too far to do in a day trip so like I wanted to go to sorry I'm talking about Frankfurt so one, I wanted to go to this Berg Elts Castle you might have heard of it but it's kind of too far from Frankfurt to do on a day tour and when it costs like 300 bucks or whatever on via tour, I'm like, okay, then I know it's kind of logistically difficult to get to. So probably going to have to rule that out, which I did, unfortunately, in the end. So anyway, I already deleted that one off my spreadsheet, but I had a couple of ideas going. So I've only got one day I can do a day trip from Frankfurt, but I've got two here because I need to compare the options. Um, yeah, and then just in general, you know, comments, notes, just like for yourself. Um, what else? Oh, this one's a big one. So what date it's available. So as you saw with this one here when it was in bold, that's because it's only available, see, only available certain days. So I can't do that one on Wednesday because I'm going to Frankfurt. So I have to do it that day. So that's why this is really helpful. And then you can also put the price in here. I know some of these are expensive, but when you do this transfer comparison, um, you can see that some of the, I haven't put them in here, but some of the cost, I've got to do that yet, but some of the cost of you going on a train yourself and going somewhere can actually end up being more expensive than getting on a bus and doing one of those organized tours. So yeah, comparison um, that I still need to do, but gives me an idea um, on how much it's probably going to cost. Next we go to travel insurance, um, another just like comparison spreadsheet, um, bold, I ended up booking through them, used them a couple of times, never had to actually use the insurance because nothing's gone wrong, um, but I like the policies, you know, unlimited, all the rest of it, and I also had a voucher. So yeah, that was my comparison. I do still compare with other um, companies before I pick something, but anyway, that's just my research. Got my usual columns, you know, excess, and then luggage. Does it cover a laptop? Because I take my laptop with me now, so I obviously need to check if that's covered or not. And if you've got a rental vehicle, etc., you get the idea. And I also like to do a rating. It's fair enough to do all this comparison, but as you're reading through it, and especially checking out the PDS, which is really boring to read, um, then you might be going, okay, this one was better than that one. And you get an idea of the rating and then put that in there. Especially since you probably won't be doing this all in one go. I spread it out over a couple of days and I'm like, okay, what was like details? It's easier to just, you know, do one as I go and then come back and do the next one. But like all of my, I guess my thoughts are there. I don't have to try and remember in my brain because I just won't remember it. It's all here for me. Next, I have the spending tracker. So obviously I haven't gone on my trip yet. So I haven't really spent anything. But if someone... Um, is buying like the accommodation and I need to um, spend uh, sorry send them money like bank transfer to pay for it then you can keep track of that here I'm going with three other people for this one so hence why I've got all those columns you could add extra ones if you wanted to and then just change the number to whatever it needs to be um, and then you yeah, just list out the expense and then who paid and then you can work out who owes what because obviously it gets super confusing when you're on the go before we leave checklist, so this one is literally just a digitized version of um, the one from my printable collection where that one worked really well. I just simply wanted digital all in one place. I probably will actually end up printing this out and then ticking it off like on paper before I go. I don't know, I just like ticking things off um, when it comes to like packing lists. So anyway, I've got all that stuff in there. Um, I did add a couple of new ones, like checking all the apps. Like I will need the Google Translate because learned from my last trip, Germany, uh, German is not really a language that you can just kind of guess like with French you can guess what the words are German yeah no way too confusing had no idea where I was going um, so definitely will be needing an app this time around and then packing list again digitized version of the printable that I've been using for a while and I've got it organized out into categories 
you can also expand that out if you want more uh, if you want the font smaller and you can add your own just type in there and off you go lastly outfit planner so that's where I'm going and then that's the time of year and then I just do a Google search of what the temperature is going to be the high and the low and then is it going to rain and then okay so what do I need to take well Obviously in these places I'm going to need to take some warmer stuff. Now how much of the trip do I need that cold stuff? If it's only like three days out of 30, do I really need to lug around a massive like, you know, ski like fur jacket? Probably not. I could probably get by um, for those three days. But in this case there is quite a few and I'm someone that really feels the cold. So I will be definitely taking a thick jacket. And also fair enough for the temperature that they say online. But keep in mind that it might be a little bit colder, especially like wind chill factor. And again, if you feel the cold, so I'm working off the basis that it's probably going to be more like five degrees off each of these just to be on the safe side in terms of packing. So yeah, that's what that one is. And that is it. So I know there's a few spreadsheets in here, but I do really use all of them. Um, and then it's all just kept nice and organized in one place. Love it, love it, love it. So keen um, to use it when I get over there, um, especially like for all the tours, you know, keeping track of which ones like I need to do um, you know sometimes you have to reconfirm them before you go on them so I'm like okay I've got my whole list here and then I'll have all my dates and everything is just organized and I just love it and it's color coded and oh, it just makes me so much less stressed when it's all organized and it's neat and color coded um, right so this has gotten kind of long but anyway that's my travel planning process I hope you found this video helpful